First at Five. From the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. Tonight on WUFT News, New Orleans is dealing with the damage left behind by a powerful tornado. One person was killed and several injured as the twister tore up a two-mile stretch of neighborhoods. The same storm front is now a potential threat to north central Florida. We get the latest on the weather here from UF forecaster Julia Haley. A gusty start for our Wednesday as we have a tornado watch until 9 p.m. in Duval County, Nassau County, and even Baker County. Overall for us, seeing all of those showers and all of that rain in our area up until 5 p.m. and even until the evening. Overall, seeing that wind stay pretty present across north central Florida. St. Augustine, 18 miles per hour of wind. Jacksonville, 25 miles per hour of wind, making sense with all of the Tornado watches over around Duval County. Overall, 10 miles per hour of wind Gainesville. 12 miles per hour Ocala and 24 for Perry. Once again, another gusty and windy day. Overall for our hour by hour, starting off with those showers. So we should have a chance for floods throughout this evening and into tomorrow. But it looks like we should be seeing that rain last throughout the morning as well. Temperatures dipping until the mid 60s. Back to you. Thanks, Julia, and thank you at home for joining us for WUFT News First at Five. I'm Samantha Narson. And I'm Sophia Mingoti. For the war in Ukraine, Western leaders are meeting today to work on their latest response. Here's NBC's Alice Barr. With an onslaught of devastating images from Ukraine illustrating what's at stake, President Biden is headed to Europe to meet with allies in an emergency NATO summit. It comes amid concerns that Russian President Vladimir Putin, frustrated by Ukraine's staunch resistance, could turn to using chemical weapons. I think it's a real threat. In a new step, the U.S. State Department today declaring Russian forces have already committed war crimes in Ukraine. We've been shocked by images of Russian forces and strikes hitting civilian sites in Mariupol, including the maternity hospital. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky will address the summit tomorrow, expected to plead for more intensive military assistance and admission to the Security Alliance. But NATO's chief says that idea is not on the agenda. But we have a responsibility to ensure that the war does not escalate beyond Ukraine and become a conflict between NATO and Russia. Western leaders are set to unveil another round of sanctions against Russia, and the U.S. could announce a permanent increase in the number of troops in NATO countries near Ukraine. Analysts say the allies need to show significant new action and set clear boundaries. What might trigger direct NATO involvement here? Um, and so I think they want to be very careful to all get on the same page. President Biden also set to meet with G7 leaders and the European Council before traveling to Poland, where millions of Ukrainians are seeking safety in a heart-wrenching humanitarian crisis. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. Reaction to the Don't Say Gay bill continues to pour in. Now, the Alachua County Commission is taking a stand. WUFT's Ethan Badowski joins us now with the latest. Ethan? The Alachua County Commission passed a resolution condemning the Don't Say Gay Bill Tuesday. The resolution urges Governor Ron DeSantis to veto the bill and states the commission will protect the county's LGBTQ members. One of the main points of the bill states, quote, Alachua County is committed to supporting and nurturing the mental health of residents with particular emphasis on youth and the LGBTQ plus community. Dist District 4 member Ken Cornell is in charge of legislative issues for the board this term. He offered his view on the bill after keeping an eye on state house activity during the legislative session. For me, what this comes down to is I trust our teachers. I mean, I trust our teachers and um, I, I, I don't even understand why this is a legislative item, so I am absolutely opposed uh, to the bill. DeSantis stated he would sign the bill, quote, relatively soon. When signed, the bill would take effect on July 1st. That's all the information I have for you at this time. Back to you at the desk. New changes are coming to Gainesville's regional transit system that may benefit you. $10.6 million in federal funds were awarded to the City of Gainesville's Department of Transportation. 
6.6 million of the award will be used to purchase 12 new replacement buses for the RTS fleet. The remaining 4 million will be used to build an east side transfer station. The city applied for the grant in November and was awarded the money March 13th. We know folks have places to go and people to see and shopping to do. And so we want to be able to be a part of that and help them get to where they need to go. So we're really looking forward to adding these to the fleet. Gainesville and Pinellas County were the only two Florida municipalities given grants. Coming up on WUFT First at Five, a community morale is adding a splash of color onto a Gainesville wall. Stay tuned for that story when we get back. You're watching WUFT TV News. A festival of creativity is bringing art to the walls of Northwest Gainesville. The citywide initiative, 352 Walls, invited community members to paint a mural. WUFT's Alexis Clevenger spent the day at the mural site and tells us more about the impact that local art brings to the community. I spoke with the heart and soul of the project to find out the importance of local art and community engagement. She told me she hopes the murals will brighten up the community. When I was four years old, I painted alongside my mother at the kitchen table, and I've been painting ever since. Pam Valcante lives for art. It changes the way people look at their environment, and um, uh, it, I think it gives a sense of pride and um, enjoyment. Before brushing strokes on city walls, Valcante taught art at Gainesville High School. She left classroom walls behind to focus on her love for teaching in an informal setting. It's an opportunity to do what she loves and share her passion with the community. I really think it's important um, to involve the community in the arts. And that's exactly what she was able to do. The mural project was made possible through 352 Walls. I guess the best way to describe it is that this is a healing um, process for the entire community. Community members of all ages came out to contribute a small part to the bigger picture. Santa Fe student Ella Pyron. I was just on a walk home from class and I saw people painting and I love painting. So I was like, oh, I should talk to the people who are painting. She welcomes the new art to brighten up the community she grew up in. I live in this neighborhood, so I always love when there's new murals, new art, things to look at. It just makes everything more beautiful and happy. Buholtz High School freshman Amelia Davidson feels more connected to her community. It's nice. Like, every time I'm down in this area now, I can be like, oh yeah, I helped with that. The city hopes these contributions will cultivate a more united Gainesville. And engaging the entire community in a creative process makes it a healthier community. A community that paints the picture it wants to see. The mural will be complete by Sunday. Community members can still come out to the festival for other events throughout the rest of the week. A Gainesville church holds a drive through food giveaway to provide free groceries to the community. Vineyard Church, located in Lincoln Estates, has hosted this event every other Wednesday for the past two years. With no grocery stores east of Waldo Road, this area is considered a food desert. The bread of the Mighty Food Bank supplies the church with groceries to hand out to the residents. People line up to stock their cars with fresh produce, non-perishables, and other necessities like cleaning products. Vineyard Church Pastor Mike Rayburn is passionate about increasing food accessibility. To me, it means everything. It means building community, building friendships, building uh, neighborhood uh, relationships. He estimates that 500 people come to each giveaway and take home a week's worth of groceries. People do not need to be affiliated with the church to go to the drive through Santa Fe College is collecting and recycling old phones to help save gorilla habitats. The college's teaching zoo aims to recycle an ore called Colton that is used in electronics. Instructor Katie Long says the ore is mined from primary gorilla habitat in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Recycling Colton reduces mining in this area, saving habitat. Long says recycling phones will also help other species living in the area. 
Gorillas are such a key animal to the Democratic Republic of Congo. Since they're such large animals, we kind of call them keystone species. So they're, they're also umbrella species where if we protect their habitat, we are protecting the habitat of everything that they call home. The college is collecting devices as part of the Gorillas on the Line initiative, which challenges people to collect as many phones as possible. Since March began, Santa Fe has collected 100 phones towards its goal of 15,000 and will continue collecting through summer. A new Gainesville golf course is in the works. University of Florida spokesperson Steve Orlando says a landowner has privately donated a portion of 4,000 acres. UF released a statement saying the new course could potentially be on the championship caliber. The land is west of Gainesville along 122nd Street. Gainesville already has six privately and publicly owned golf courses. UF currently relies on the Mark Bostick Golf Course on 2nd Avenue. Mark Matson plays at this course four to five times a week. I'm excited of the prospect of a new course in Gainesville. It's, it's a long time in waiting. Residents near the area were invited to a workshop this evening to learn more about the development. A cold front is bringing storms throughout north central Florida, but how severe are these storms? We'll be back with the full forecast in a few minutes. You're watching WUFT TV News. Welcome back. Currently tracking this system all throughout north central Florida, seeing those isolated severe storms all throughout the area. And that's all because this cold front, which just came from the Louisiana area that just had those tornadoes, is making its way toward Gainesville as well. Hopefully not as severe, but still seeing those isolated storms here in Gainesville for the evening, seeing that big chunk of rain and showers, but looking to have some clear dry spots overall throughout the night into the morning on your work commute seeing some showers just east of Gainesville but as this cold front passes getting a little bit of a break and then heading back into full swing with another round of showers overall in the afternoon for Thursday and in the evening for Thursday as well seeing some more showers so you may want to have your umbrella handy with you overall outside of our studio seeing those overcast skies a little bit of rain on our camera as of right now been seeing some lightning earlier currently 74 degrees with those northwesterly winds overall starting to get that rain here in north central florida our temperatures currently sitting in the mid 70s 74 for gainesville 79 ocala 77 palatka and 72 for stark overall sitting in the mid 70s and our winds looking a little high over here in live oak and perry but a little bit lower here in gainesville and stark as well 10 for stark and even 22 miles per hour for Lake City. Now for this evening, we should be seeing that rain stay throughout the night and into the morning overall, which means that for Thursday, we will be seeing those lower temperatures sitting in the mid 60s. Our rainfall looking to stay pretty steady at one inch for Gainesville, a little bit higher in our neighboring cities, one and a half for Lake City and one and a half for Live Oak. This weekend though, expecting some sunnier skies ahead as this cold front passes it will bring all of those showers outside of our area and we should be seeing a high pressure zone make its way toward us giving us a ridge and some sunnier skies for our next couple of days this week saturday looking pretty comfortable and pretty nice sunday as well pretty nice also sitting in the 70s with those sunny skies overall now for our six day outlook thursday once again prepare for all of that rain and all of those showers you may want to stay inside or carry an umbrella with you wherever you go but starting on friday start starting to see all of that clear up going to be sitting in the 70s which is 10 degrees cooler than what we saw today overall for saturday starting to see, see all of the sun back in full swing and of course those temperatures rising showing a warming trend throughout the next week Back to you. A new era is about to begin in Gators men's basketball. The new head coach, Todd Golden, had his introductory press conference today. Find out more about the new head coach and who he spoke to after taking the job coming up on sports. You're watching WUFT-TV News. 
the sports, I'm Lauren Cooney. The golden era of Gators men's basketball is now underway. New coach Todd Golden had his introductory press conference today. Golden was playing for St. Mary's College when Florida, former Florida head coach Billy Donovan won two national championships with UF. Golden said he has goosebumps after speaking with Donovan on the phone on Saturday for 30 minutes. It, it gave me goosebumps really the whole time we were chatting because he was so unselfish, so willing to be a resource to me. He said he was willing to help as much or as little as possible. Uh, talked about how passionate him and his family were about Gainesville. With the arrival of Golden, all eyes are on former head coach Mike White's 2022 recruiting class. Yesterday, Malik Renault, the 29 overall prospect in the 2022 class, shared he would be decommitting from UF. However, today, Denzel Aberdeen's high school basketball coach said that Aberdeen intends in staying committed to the Florida Gators. And he's still excited to be a Gator. Um, they are planning on staying. Uh, they, they met with Coach Golden um, over the phone uh, earlier this week. Uh, they're planning on meeting in person soon, uh, but um, conversations went well. The eighth-ranked Florida baseball team hosted the Bethune-Cookman last night at the Florida ballpark. It was a close matchup between the two teams with the Gators defeating the Wildcats 3-2 as the Gators allowed just one hit in the contest. This was Florida's first one hitter in eight seasons and made the Gators 6-0 in midweek games. Outfielder Judd Fabian continued his strong season by hitting two home run in the games. This is Fabian's eighth and ninth home runs of the year, which leads the orange and blue. He also leads the team on base percentage at 480. Head coach Kevin O'Sullivan said he's pleased with Fabian's development this season. I think his strikeout to walk ratio has been phenomenal. I mean, his strike zone management is entirely different than it was his, you know, his previous years. So I'm really pleased with his development there. The Gators will host the 21st ranked LSU Tigers this weekend at Florida Ballpark. Spring practice continues for the Florida football team. The role of the quarterback is always in the spotlight, and after Emory Jones announced he will be entering the transfer portal on Saturday, fans assumed that Anthony Richardson would take over the role of starting quarterback. However, with the addition of Ohio State transfer Drack Miller, another possibility is open. Head coach Billy Napier says he's happy with how Miller's been picking up quickly in practice. Jack um, comes across as a guy who has been in competition before, right? Uh, he's played uh, in games before, right? And I think it do he does come across like it's not too big for him. You know, he's comfortable. Spring practice continues for the Gators tomorrow. On the professional football side, the Kansas City Chiefs have traded wide receiver Tariq Hill to the Miami Dolphins. The Chiefs traded Hill for five total picks in the NFL draft. Three of these picks will be for the first, second, and fourth round this year. The remaining two picks will be for the fourth and sixth round next year. Miami will sign Hill to a four-year, $120 million million extension with $72 million guaranteed. This extension is the richest wide receiver contract in NFL history. Hill isn't the only wide receiver that will, the Chiefs will be losing. Former Gator Demarcus Robinson has agreed to sign with the Chiefs' division rival, the Las Vegas Raiders. Robinson has spent all six of his professional career with the Chiefs. That's your look at sports. Now back to the desk. Let's get a final check on the forecast with Julia Haley. Wednesday and Thursday, expecting some potentially severe weather, isolated storms before noon, but overall strong winds and tornadoes are possible throughout our area. And of course, a warning is set for Duval, Nassau and Baker counties as well. Overall, localized flooding is possible throughout our area, so you may want to stay inside and stay dry as we do have all of that rain and those showers coming on Thursday. That cold front bringing some cooler temperatures, but by Friday rising back up into the 70s, mid 70s, that warming trend staying pretty present until the end of the week and into the next work week. Back to you. Thanks, Julia. BBC World News is next and the PBS News Hour is coming up at seven. But your Florida news is always on at WUFT.org. Have a good night.